Richard Sama. Oh, thank goodness I got through. Well, where are you right now? Could you come straight back to the church? There's an urgent situation. Huh? I just finished my business at the Energy Association. What happened? Why are you so flustered? It's Nina-chan! She suddenly doubled over in pain and collapsed! What? We put her on a bed for now. But she's still growing in pain as she calls out your name. Her fever keeps climbing higher. And even doctors don't know what's happening to her. Please, just come back as quickly as you can! G got it. I'll come back right away. Nina! Nina! Father! Welcome home! N Nina? Uh, are you... Are you okay? She... She seems to be okay now. It's as if that high fever and pain never happened. Her fever really does seem to have gone down. It doesn't look like she's just putting on a brave face. What on earth happened? Sorry for worrying you. Even I don't know what happened. But I'm all okay now. <laughs> I'm kind of happy. You came in here looking so pale with worry for me, father. You've been so busy with work since coming back. I was starting to wonder whether you've forgotten about me. Uh, I see. Whatever it was, I'm just glad you're okay. I had no idea what was happening when Kana-san contacted me. Richard Sama, could I have a moment over here? Your fever might have gone down, but this could have been a sign of something to come. So I want you to rest for today. I'll have one of the church staff on standby outside your room just in case. Don't hesitate to call out if something happens. Okay, Father. Yeah, it, that's where the translation seems to be a little off because uh, she supposedly only calls uh, Richard Father, which is why I think she should be calling Richard Daddy and not Father. <laughs> What's wrong, Kana-san? What's got you looking so pale? The thing is, Nina was complaining of back pain when she had her high fever. So Akiyama-sama and I rushed to take a look and check. I couldn't keep her back exposed like that forever, so I took a photo. Mr. sama please take a look at it. What is this? You should know what it is. It is the exact same one that's on the back of your hand. Meaning, this is how Nina turns into a demon. Akiyama Sama had a grim expression on his face as he was looking at it with me. He probably realized it was no ordinary bruise. Of course, it's no ordinary bruise. Why do you people keep calling it a bruise? <laughs> Fortunately, the bruise vanished along with her fever, but when we serves, the powering of her bruise matches a certain other one. Yes, it certainly did. That was the same pattern as mine. But this was something a demon puts on a human. My case is one thing, but how did someone who's always here at the church get a demon emblem? Demon emblem? Is that what the mark is? What exactly does it do? Um. According to Gold Sam, these marks have a connection to demons. But luckily for you that you're male, this situation would have been more complicated if you were a woman. From my uh, ether interference testing, I found that your demon emblem strongly interfaces with male hormones, and by doing so, suppresses physical effects. If a female were to have the emblem, I suspect it would actually influence her body. And not just mentally. I believe the demon essence would have physical effects. Uh, um, such as a female with the emblem would be strongly affected by it and slowly turn into a demon. 
It wouldn't matter where or not she were originally human. Ah! You just gonna turn it to a demon! Which, really, if as long as she doesn't lose her sanity, I mean, it shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> demon emblem. A curse, as it were. It's not something that inscribed on human for a mere day or so. And especially not a child like Nina. In which case, there is only one possibility. You and Nina must have had the marks placed on you sometime before you came to this church. I, I'm very sorry, Richard Sama. I was so shocked when I saw a mark on her that I had to explain everything to him, as you rightly should. You hid the fact that you were being haunted, and also the fact that, you're, that you absorbed a demon with that demon emblem. There are so many things I'd like to ask, but we only have so much time. I'd like you to tell me everything you found out at the Energy Association, as well as all the details about that demon emblem you have. Uh, understood. The power to connect to demons? The curse that high-ranking demons place on humans? And women that are violated with this emblem gradually turn into demons? And the only way to lift that the curse is to find the demon responsible and either defeat them or get them to directly lift it themselves. All this means you're fine, but Nina's situation is going to be a race against time. Things are going to get really bad for her if we can't deal with it quickly. But Richard Sama lost his memories from before he came to our church. We don't have any clues as to which demons we're supposed to be looking for. Not quite. Richard hasn't lost all of his memories. He's just desperately trying not to remember them. Some instinct within you continues to refuse at any attempt to try to remember the past. It's almost like you're trying to escape from some sin. Your mental confusion at the public cemetery when you had that fit was probably a part of that instinct to never face that past. Regardless of what the church wants, neither I nor Kaasan have any interest in who you are. That's because we both respect your wishes. But now that it's come to this, you're going to need to prepare yourself to face your past, both for your sake and Nina's. Kana-san, I'd like you to avoid reporting this demon emblem situation at HQ. As for Nina herself, please inform her that she's simply unwell with a cold. Uh, are you sure about this? If we do that and HQ finds out, you'll... As I heard you talk about being haunted in that mark appearing, I was wondering the whole time why you hadn't lost your blessing. Despite being so close to demons, why has God been protecting your soul and enabling you to use that power to bow demons? That, that's a good point! The fact that you have that mark and God's protection hasn't wavered me, must mean that you have some kind of duty you need to fulfill. And it's surely no coincidence that the mark has now appeared on Nina. I'm sure you're going to have to face your past. Our past? Richard, whatever you might think of her, you're the only person who Nina's ever opened her heart to. Maybe to you Nina's just some girl, a stranger, you don't see any value in facing the past with. Or, maybe she's a demon, marked with a demon emblem, that you should drive away as a priest. That'd be kind of hypocritical of <laughs> him if he did that. Either way, isn't it about time you decide what kind of place she holds in your heart, Richard? 
It's obvious who Nina is to me. To me, she's my daughter, and as such, I should protect her. Alright, that's chapter zero complete. The trial. Except for the introduction to the hotel, but we'll deal with that shortly. Uh, I'm so excited to get to chapter one. I'm just curious to see if, since we know that th since this is a prequel, the Nina would turn into a demon, but then again, Shrift does have many multiple parallel worlds, so she doesn't necessarily have to turn into a demon. Question is, which version is considered the good ending? Regardless, we'll be finding out soon enough. Although, since it's just chapter one, that's out, I'm not quite sure how far we'll get. In the original, not too much of interest happened until you got to the chapter 4. But we'll see. The Guardian has gone in touch. It seems his demon emblem has appeared. And that one he took with him. I believe they called her Nina. The marks appeared on her, too. What on earth are you thinking? Is this illogical, pointless resistance what you had in mind when you wanted to hide from us? Nothing to say? Well, fine. This won't hinder our plans in any event. It's a pity for her, too. She wouldn't have missed such an interesting event if she had been in the demon realm at this time of year. So instead, I got to see his struggling and your last moments. Richard, Nina... to check out the next quest. A suspicious hotel. Death's indulgence and void indulgence. Accept your quest. There's actually rumor going around town about a hotel that only the demon possessed can see. They say this uh, it has a doorway down a back alley. That only those possessed by a demon can see. And those who pass beyond that door will have anything they wish granted. It that sounds very dubious. It's just a rumor, I take it? Yes, a rumor. I've yet to confirm whether or not it's actually true, as unfortunately, I myself am not possessed by a demon. But you, Richard Sama, would seem to be the ideal person to confirm it. How about it? Feel like going to have a look for me? She smooth talker. You basically talked into being game pig to confirm rumored truth. All right. What do you have to say? Nothing.
to the hotel. Izayoi Hotel. This is the hotel mentioned in the rumor? It certainly doesn't seem like there are any other people around. This place have weird atmosphere. And not like dream or reality. Maybe it's uh, like some holy world? But we're saying of all is that you were able to physically enter this space. Hey, something's sitting in seat behind counter. It's Kushigun! <laughs> What's this? Customer? It's been a while since I've had those. I don't think I've seen any more what with the whole demon haunting thing. A, a talking pillow? Surely it's not that surprising after what you've seen so far. I mean, you already know that demons exist, so surely a talking pillow is nothing special. They call me? Oh, yes. Kushigun. The current bit isn't horrific. It's actually part of my name. R right. And sorry, but as I, as, but I'm as busy as I look. I got all this work. I'm not used to piling up. It r really never ends. If it's a hotel guide you need, I'll have to make two of all the workers. Hey, we got guests. Don't just stand there. Take them inside. Hello, Cheshire. <laughs> Welcome to the Izayoi Hotel. I'm Jabberwock, a worker here at this hotel. So, interesting note. Because she is an intervention interface, and we as the player are the one who performs intervention... But since she's the interface for it, and this game, while being a prequel, comes after Shrift 2, this is Cheshire after Shrift 1. So yes, I know time kind of stops making sense, but remember, parallel worlds, uh, uh, <laughs> Shrift universe being different from our own, time interfaces work wonky. So yeah, this is a... This is Cheshire after Shrift 1, even though Shrift 2 takes place before Shrift 1. This is your first time here, yes? In which case, I will give you this. Use it on whichever room you like later. Wh whatever room I like? I don't exactly come here to stay overnight. You're not the one staying here. This hotel is a place for the demons you may have bond with to stay at and wait for you. This Izayoi Hotel is made so you could go in the room of a demon you like and do lewd stuff. Or whatever to deepen your friendship with them. But, but, when doing that sort of thing make me lose my soul? This is that kind of hotel. Faith, levels, and such don't mean a thing here, do you understand? Just explaining it is boring. So how about you come upstairs? And I'll explain while you see it with your own two eyes. Look, see that room there with the name tag over it? Kageona? Why is there a room called that? This place creates a room connected directly to the mind of a human who gets possessed by a demon. So, in a sense, you could call it a private room. It's a room for your exclusive use. I suppose we should call it my room, or something like to that effect. But my room? 
You're probably going to be absorbing all sorts of demons with that emblem of yours. And every time you do, they'll take up residence in one of these vacant rooms. In other words, you're building a kind of a reconnaissance with the demons in your mind and... Or resonance with the demons in your mind and... <laughs> Yami. <laughs> A slight correction. Any demons connected with your story will end up filling the vacant rooms of this hotel. To put it our way, this is not reality. So your faith, your levels, and everything else have no fin fundamental relevance here. But, if you so wish, you can lift some of the restrictions here. Just go with what you feel is best. If you want more details, you can go ask the sheep in front of the elevator. He's been around a lot longer than me. In that sense, you should say you could say he's far more of a proper hotel worker than I am. But that's his role, so it can't really be helped. You just relax and take it easy from here. Oh, as for those indulgences you're getting, think carefully about whether you use them. I got death's indulgence and void's indulgence. I guess I should ask. Void's indulgence. <laughs> Restriction that humans cannot uh, bed demons while in the withered state. That's for Void Zildjans. With that equipped, you can get squeezed by demons even while withered. Just now that you won't gain any, any SP. Void nothing if you have it equipped when you're not withered. Okay. And then Death's Indulgence. Won't result in loss of your soul. However, if you have Death's Indulgence, you get a level strain from you just like in the outside world. Naturally, if your levels reach zero, it's game over. Or rather, you'll get an ending, I guess. In a way, you'll wind up being joined with a demon for the rest of your life. Yeah, though it's true, having your level strain will let you gain SP at an explosive rate. Be sure to exercise a lot of costume when using it. Alright. So we got K Sith, Yami, Kage. I don't think you can actually do any more story related stuff with them right now. Not in the trial. Talk, that's fine. What should we talk about? Oh, I just don't have enough trust built up with her. Okay. Well, regardless, I'll need to build up some trust with my demons. And then try talking to them again. Like I said, everything in this... Your affection and your level should carry over. So it should be fine to grind this out here. That... Since I got some grinding to do, I... I think that will do it for now. Need something? Ah. Yeah. The work clothes here are a little revealing and stifling, but playing this kind of role might be good every now and then. Hmm. <laughs> Compared to what you were wearing before, <laughs> that's nothing. Ah, busy, busy, busy. I'm such an idiot for thinking I get to relax by going above ground. That mayor does pretty well. Don't worry, she's changed from how she used to be. She works as my secretary these days. <laughs> yep, since you recently turned her from the black fox 